I actually haven't gone on any dates when I've been here. I use Hinge and I can see already that guys here are shorter than me. It is very true that if you come from a, a Nordic region over yeah. to the United States, you will be disappointed in the uh, average height of, of the average man. Call from Johanna. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? Oh my god, hi. Um, I'm, I was afraid you were going to answer, to be honest. <laughs> you you called and yet you were afraid I was going to answer? Yes, because my like my whole body got pink. I started getting anxious when I heard like the, the tone that I actually got through. Well, you know, that I, anxiety, you know I've, I always used to think... Not not all anxiety, but pointed anxiety. You know when you're anxious because you can really uh, point it to mm-hmm. something specific. It's a form of excitement. I used to I used oh. to do a lot of um, stand up, and of course I, I do my live shows and stuff. But I used to you know get nervous before uh, a, a show or something I cared about, and I always used to try to in my head be like, oh, "This is good. It's good to be nervous. It means that life is happening." You know, right? Like when you're like think, think think about when you're the most depressed and just like there's the, nothing, and you're like I could just could fucking die right now. Like you're not <laughs> nervous. You those, those those times you're not nervous. So nervousness, no. even though it's a tough emotion to deal with, it, it it signifies that things in your life are are happening are happening, and it's a weird. It's also like a weird form of like being present. You know, you're kind of yeah, you're a little true. bit more present when you're nervous in a sense. You're you're not uh, uh, depressed about the past or anxious about the future. Future, you're like, well, I guess you can have anxiety about the future or be nervous about the future. But I mean, you're nervous about a thing that you're actually in right now. That's kind of a blessing, is it not? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I pushed myself to not hang up, which I usually do when I get through to say my name. I usually just hang up because I'm afraid, but. I pushed through. I mean, I've had problems with anxiety since I was like 10, like embarrassing things that I've been anxious for. Um, so I'm thinking I'm just going to keep on pushing through. Well, why don't you take yourself off the speakerphone and we can talk more. Oh, no. Okay. Are you are you off the speakerphone now? I am. What's your name? Hmm. My name? Yeah, you can give me a fake name. No, no, no. My name is Johanna. I'm not American. I was going to I was gonna ask you, where are you from? You sound like you have an accent. I'm from Sweden. Oh, Hargan, mm-hmm. Hargan Dargan. I, I was actually going to go to your live show, but I ended up like having to do something else that evening. But I was actually wanted to ask you, I know this is not about you, but what you thought about Sweden, what you did in Sweden, if you don't mind me asking. Yes, I had a live show in Stockholm, Sweden. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it was it was I was only there for like a day, but uh, you guys have uh, uh, you guys there was a Seven Eleven. I just eat at Seven Eleven everywhere I go because it's easy. Uh, just and the hot dogs. This, no, there was some like udon shit Ooh. at the Seven Eleven, okay. and I was like, oh, this is cool. This Seven Eleven has like an udon bar. Whoa, wait, okay, that must have been a high tech Seven Eleven. I do know we have. A, a court, or compared to America or New York, where I live right now, it's, it is really fresh and sweet and everything. I thought. How old are you, Joanna? I'm 22. Why do you? What are I'm you doing, young. living in in New York? Um, I guess I've always wanted to kind of live here. I think it might be partly because I watched Gossip Girl as a kid. Honestly, I'm going to blame it on that. I don't know. I've always like energy but right now i'm here to study gonna answer your question shortly what are you studying uh communication design it was honestly something i'm not really wanted to do before i just uh wanted to be in new york and the easiest way to get here if you have some money is through a student visa but i do enjoy it what do you think of new york compared to to stockholm (laughs) new york is way more fun it is way more fun um I don't like being catcalled, but I do like being able to go to do anything whenever I want to compared to Stockholm. Why can you not do things in Stockholm? Do they, does everything, everything closes early, doesn't it? 
Yeah, everything's closer here. Um, also, everything's open much later. America's really like special in that way that it's like retail stores are open to like 10 p.m. And I just feel bad for the workers because I don't know what they have, like why customers come in at 10 p.m. Um, now, what are you studying? Oh, wait. You're, uh, uh, fuck. Hold on. You already said that. So I know you have a bad memory. I watched the I watched the pardon. <laughs> did you just call it? Did you just call it a pardon? Um, po- no pod podcast. Oh, I'm screaming! Wait, podcast. Oh, okay, I thought you called it a pardon, and like, and I thought that was like a Swedish name for podcast. That is uh, the the if you I don't know what it's called, but it's like the if you were supposed to say the pod, that's what it's called. Pod pod them. What is it? Um, all right, so you're studying, communicate. What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. I don't want to have a baby daddy like the other callers, I think. But I am very afraid of settling down in the relationship. So I'm, I don't know. I don't, I want to be, I want to make money. <laughs> okay, nice. Nice. Are you, are you like going on any dates or anything like that while you're, while you're in town? Um, I actually haven't gone on any dates the past year when I've been here. I kind of, first of all, oh, I'm gonna, I don't know if this is gonna sound good or not, but guys here, I use Hinge and I can see already that guys here are shorter than me. I mean, I'm just 5'8", but I think like also the dating culture here is not something that I'm really attracted to. Uh, it is very true that, uh, your if you come from a a, a Nordic region over yeah. to the United States, you will be disappointed in the uh, average height of of the average man. Yeah, but there are way more. There's a lot of boys here that are very attractive. Not boys. Wait, guys. Not boys. Not young boys. People over the age of twenty two. <laughs> Good. Yes, I am going. Yeah. I am going on a date this Saturday. Is this uh, uh, with, with a Hinge fun. guy? Yeah. I mean, Hinge has been the best because I can learn more about the person. Um, I feel like Tinder is not... What, a- what, was it, what was it on this guy's Hinge profile that was inspiring to you to, to meet up with him? The same reason that it was that I started watching you, which was a mention of the H3 podcast, which I do watch. So I was just like, okay, this is nice. This guy might be able to talk to him about some things we have in common. Uh, so you wait. So you went on a date with this guy just because he was a uh, uh, a fan of the H3 podcast? No, I'm going on a date with him on Saturday. You're going on a yeah, but you're going on a date with him just because he's a fan of the H3 podcast. <laughs> So there's yes, I'm just gonna do it without put, boxing myself. If you're listening to this podcast, put if put in your dating app. All right, I'm gonna throw this out there as an experiment. Mm-hmm. I want you if you're listening to this. This is to the listeners. If you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> throw a therapy gecko listener in your dating profile. And let me know if that gets you any matches. Let me know if anyone messages you based upon that. I'm serious. If you put the, put that in your Tinder bio or Hinge bio and let me know if you end up going on any dates or getting any messages or falling deeply in love because of that. I'm very you curious. Will you take your wedding? Um, I've always said this. I've always said this. And this <laughs> is my deal. This is my deal to anyone who wants me to officiate their wedding. If you can do it, Within um, a ten-minute walk from wherever I currently am at, <laughs> and there's food there, I'll do it. What about an Uber? If like we're thirty minutes away, but we get you an Uber, would you get me an Uber home too? Um, if it's less than twenty bucks, yeah. I need a guaranteed Uber home, a guaranteed <laughs> Uber there, and the Uber length of time has to be less than 30 minutes. Okay, we'll talk about it when I find my gecko, man. My gecko husband. Okay, great. Great. Um, well, that's cool. Uh, 
Uh, what else? What else? Actually, oh, is there a re- is there a th- I was gonna ask you before. Is there a like a specific mm-hmm. thing you called to want to talk about? I did want to call about one thing, but I for, I was thinking I did not want to talk about it because I told my mom that if I ever wanted to be on this podcast, I'd talk about something, and she said, "Oh, that I would want to listen." So I was like, "I'm not going to talk about this," but I think it's I I think this is thanks to you as well that I've done this. So since I've come to the U.S., I've tried uh, weed, and I think I've like kind of I've <laughs> heard on. you talk about it, so I felt Hold more on. comfortable you, doing it. Yeah, you started smoking weed because of me. No, I'm not gonna admit that. But you've been talking about it, so I've been like, okay, it's it's not that weird. Uh, I'll try mm-hmm. it. And I was actually waiting a couple of days ago for you to go live for me to pop an edible because I knew that I feel like you'd be the right person to speak to or watch <laughs> if I got high uh, okay. but I I took a 50 milligram edible and I didn't feel anything you took a 50 milligram edible after okay, never wait, wait, smoking wait, wait, weed wait wait wait, wait 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 so I've smoked a blunt before and I didn't really feel anything I took I've took um, like 20 milligram or 15 milligram a couple of days ago didn't feel anything and today I took a 50 now. And I just felt like a little bit ten, like it just felt a, felt a little bit of tension. Uh, but other than that, I didn't feel, didn't feel anything. And I don't know what the problem is. 55, <laughs> like five zero, fifty. 50. Yes, sir. And how long ago did you take that? <laughs> uh, I actually had to have a timer. Wait, I'm going to turn off, turn on the speaker real quick to go check the timer that I set. Okay. Oh wait. So it, uh, this isn't something. You, this is something you j- recently did. Okay. Yeah. Wait. It's hours and twenty six minutes ago since I took the fifty milligram edible. An hour and t- and you don't feel anything. No. Six six hours and twenty six minutes. So it's been like a while now. Okay. You took no, a fifty I... milligram edible six hours ago <laughs> and you feel nothing. Yeah. I I didn't did you have a like I felt big Swedish breakfast this morning. Mm, I don't know, but I'm on meds, <laughs> so that might be what's interfering it. And I have a really ho- high alcohol tolerance, and I don't know if that affects it too. I don't want to ask my mom because I, I know she will be angry if I oh, tell her I just that I say, to again. I don't like to talk. I don't like to read the chat or talk about the chat while uh, mm-hmm. on the podcast, but I'm going to. Um, Stoned Bear Seven Ten says 50 milligrams is a low dose. Well, of course it is for you, stoned bear. <laughs> I actually anyway. have some, I spoke to some friends about it. There were a friend that's a that's, um, casual smoker, or not casual, I think she smokes a lot, but she usually takes 200 to 400 milligrams. So um, next time I will try 100, that's what I'm thinking, maybe 75, because they are 100 milligram candies like each of them okay where did you where did you buy where did you buy this edible from just the like one of these um new york um pot places one of the smoke smoke shops that's what it's called is weed recreationally legal in new york now i will i think so but i will not comment on if it's legal for me as a visa holder to it's it, it 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 would be if it's if it's recreational legal for everyone then it's recreationally legal for you as long as you're 21. Yeah. I'm, anyway. I'm, actually, anyway. Okay. Never. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's one of these like a brand ones. It's called. Do you want me to say what it's called? It's like prepackaged, like one of those. No. Candies. We. You're. You are. But you're immune to weed. When uh when weed turns oh. everybody into um, flesh eating zombies, you'll be the last one left. That's good. Uh, I take if I t- like if I want to if I want to get like good and fucked up on an edible, I'll take ten milligrams. So you took five of those, but anyway, so you know what? Maybe you're just so maybe you're just all maybe you're just naturally too cool. Anyway, I'm a bit okay. fast too, so I think that might be it. Like, uh, I Joanna, might need you, more. This all this all you we were talking about this because you said you had a specific thing you wanted to talk about. What was that specific? Oh, thing? no, I just needed to know if I should take a higher dose. I don't Hold think on. I have anything other interesting. <laughs> Not right now. Another time. 
Okay, I'm gonna ignore that question. There was a you said you were talking to your mom, and there was like a thing you wanted to talk about on the podcast, and like you, her mom said, "Oh, if you talked about it, I'd want to listen to it." What was that thing? It was about the thing we just spoke about. Wait, it was it was just about this weed edible? Yeah, because I mean, in Sweden, uh, every drug, like recreational or not, is illegal. There, I, I could have sworn there were two things that you wanted to talk about. And all right, if this is one of them, what's oh, the other one? I, at the end of the call, I started talking about, like, I have had panic attacks since I was 10 years old. And of the, for the stupidest okay. things, too. I can tell okay. you one of them if you want, but it might not be interesting enough. Um, I, only laughed because, I only laughed because I felt like, um, I mean, I, I guess people smoke weed for panic attacks, but I think weed... Everyone's different, man. So some people weed gives panic attacks, but anyway, uh, yeah. yeah, sure, we can we can talk about panic attacks. I'm not okay. gonna. I have no. Uh, I have no diagnosis or prescription for you, but we can talk. Oh, about I have it. enough. I do have diagnoses, so that's I get. I have unspecified panic attack disorder. They they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me really. So I've just been on the same meds for like ten years. But okay. So so this is I guess. I had I was uh, in a music class that was all I, I had uh, music uh, choir every day of the week, and this was at the time when I started to like find out about sex and um, started sexualizing people. Basically, I'd uh, when I was around ten years old, I watched porn and I had a panic attack, <laughs> uh, and I told my parents right away. I couldn't keep anything from my parents because I was afraid. That's what actually what I'm doing right now too. I'm practicing practicing keeping secret secrets from my parents. So hopefully my mom does not listen to this, which I don't think she will. Um, but okay, hold on. Uh, I have several. I have several questions. You, all right? So when you were ten, you started watching porn, and the porn gave you a heart, gave you a panic attack. Yes, because I what knew was, that it was wrong. Like you knew that. Like in your brain, like the sex was wrong, or like you you watching it was wrong. No, so my dad used to have these resti- restrictions on our computers. Um, he said like he he locked certain websites or certain keywords, and he also said like timers. But I bypassed this by using my mom's computer because I I, I think it started off. I went on YouTube and searched boobs, and there's this video of this Same. waitress. Have you seen the video of the waitress, uh, waitress walking around and serving beer? And when she like puts down the, the beer, the cleavage is hiding behind like um, uh, the plate with the beer, basically. So you see her boobs. And then I went on. I think there was this magazine called Cat, um, and I think I went on their website and saw this porn video. And I still remember it very well. And I'm sometimes I'm even like I want to go back and see it, but like just to kind of like help i don't even know if it would help me like to heal my inner self but it would be kind of fun to find it again that video uh so i um, i was thinking a lot about sex basically and i was 10 years old i didn't know what the hell was going on and um so i had this male teacher this choir teacher who um in class i couldn't stop looking at his penis like i couldn't stop thinking oh he has a penis oh my accent popped out sorry he has a penis under those pants um and i started getting panic attacks and my mom uh, i had to tell my mom and i couldn't go to school for for a year uh because i was scared to think about the fact that he had a penis what did your and hello and when you oh no i'm here oh sorry <laughs> you, thought, so you thought you thought I was go. You thought I just dipped out. Um, yeah. So wait, so when you told your mom, mm-hmm. did you did you tell your mom that you were having panic attacks because you were simply perceiving the idea that your teacher had a penis? Yes. What did she say? Thankfully, she's a doctor, so I guess she has. She had. But she had a lot of understanding for my panic attacks. And then she was mostly like, okay, then you don't have to go to uh, music 
like you don't have to go to choir anymore. Um, but then what? So but then it, aren't, wouldn't you just wouldn't like any person you see mm-hmm. you would just perceive that they have a penis or a vagina? Like why was it that guy specifically? I think because in Sweden up till up till sixth grade you have the same teacher for all of the subjects. So I only met this. Uh, I only had uh, he was my only the, the only adult in my life, like the male, except for my dad that I didn't. I don't think I had that problem with my dad. Uh, but he was the only male teacher figure that I had in my life, and he was intimidating too. So I don't know. Hmm. You know, you're actually you're making me think. When I was, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say ten or eleven too. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also looking at searching boobs on YouTube and. Um, <laughs> Dude, I remember, I remember I am, um, yeah, I was like 10 and like, I liked looking at boobs. I liked looking at boobs, mm-hmm. but vaginas freaked me out. But, <laughs> and so sometimes like, I would be like looking on, this is a throw. I bet there's gotta be, there's gotta be one dude listening to this podcast who knows what I'm talking about. But there was this like glamour magazine called Nuts Magazine. It was like a, uh. Uh, a British glamour magazine with all these like British models in it, and they were like topless models, and I and I would like that I, a lot. That might but, have been um, like a Swedish version of what I saw. Also, like four maybe. letters, it was four letter naked models. Yeah, maybe, and um, or like page three or something like that. But then, like, I started <laughs> like, and anytime a vagina would pop up, I would like put my hand <laughs> over the um over over the screen because I something about the vagina freaked me out. Um, but then I like I started seeing a lot of like vaginas on the internet, and some of them were like r- like they were like red or something. I don't. Know, I just kept thinking like, oh, there's like this red slit, and it, like it freaked me out. And I remember I was uh I was having a dr- I had a dream once, where like I couldn't sleep because I was like scared of vaginas. I was like 11 maybe, and I fuck I and you know and dude I fucking woke my parents up. And I, I didn't know what to fucking say. I just couldn't sleep. I don't, I, oh. I don't know what to say. I couldn't just be like, I'm afraid of I vaginas. <laughs> so I woke them up yeah. and I said, um, I said, uh, I'm, <laughs> I fucking said, I said, I've been having a lot of adult dreams. <laughs> and they, Wait, and they, were, they were, they were, they were kind of like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> So did you explain or did you kind of walk around it? I think they were. I I, I just kind of walked around it because I couldn't tell them that I was looking all that stuff up. They almost. They definitely. Actually, no. I don't think they knew because I used to be um really big on like like cl- making sure I cleared the history okay, and the okay. cookies and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, that's one Wait, of the things. That's that's one of the thing. One of the things. That uh, I appreciate about being an adult is that um, you know I don't I don't clear the history on my I, I watch yeah lo- I just watch loads of porn. Well, I know mm-hmm. I just I watch loads of porn on my MacBook, and if some and I don't clear the history after after I'm done. You don't um, even go incognito. No, cause like what it's I'm I'm an adult, you know. I have my own computer. I I, don't know, I can I, I can make though. the adult decision <laughs> to look at porn, and nobody can stop True. me. Yeah, except for your service, like ISP, I guess, internet service provider. If they see that you, or if they can block up something like that, I don't know how it works. I just know that I'm going. Dude, ISPs make so hey, they would never do that. ISPs make a shit ton of money off of porn. They're probably making more money off of porn than the people who make the porn. Sad reality of ISP truth. Um, I just all right, feel like so, incognito is the best. So, okay, I have a question, and you can talk about this or not talk about this if you want to. But like, has any of this shit like? Like the fact that porn used to give you panic attacks and stuff. Like, has any of this stuff informed your attitudes towards sex and stuff? Like, as an adult, um, I'm not fully under. 
understanding the question, but I know that nowadays, I think after some time I got used to watching porn, I, I realized that it wasn't, uh, I was, it wasn't an issue. It wasn't something that was wrong. But now I've kind of just gotten dependent on porn. <laughs> You've become dependent on porn. Yeah, I just, I feel like I can't, um, I, I can't come without watching porn. Like I can't get anything from my imagination. Hmm. Kind of gotten too used to it, I guess. You know, I've talked, I, 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 and I will say this, this is interesting. You're the first female porn addict I've talked to on this show that I know of. I've talked to a lot of dudes about porn addiction. When you say that, I'm, I want to say that I'm not a porn addict, but I guess like because I can't, I can't finish without watching porn. That's the problem. That is. The Sorry, problem. I didn't mean to call you. I didn't mean to call you a porn addict. No, no, no. But no. you did don't say worry, worry. you were dependent on porn. Yeah, I don't feel. I don't like masturbate too much i masturbate like once or twice a week which is i don't know how normal that is for a girl but when i do i know that i can't finish without watching porn i can't ooh, do that I, in ooh, my head I, I don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know how uh what is typical for a girl either but once or twice a week's not that fucking bad has it has it affected your sex life at all um uh, yes <laughs> sorry I'm laughing because I'm just thinking of the repercussions of talking about this but I also don't think anyone I know will listen to this um, you don't have to talk about I'm, it if you don't I want would to like to say that I'm an author no I, I want to because there's I know that there's a lot of other girls like me and I don't know if this is porn related but uh, in my sex life I've never been able to finish uh, at all I think and I don't know if it's because uh, I'm not watching porn. I've never tried watching porn during intercourse. It feels disrespectful. Um, but I just feel stressed. A lot of problems that I enter, that I come across, are that men usually take pride and like really want to make the girl finish. And that just stresses me out even more because I know I'm not going to be able to do it. If you understand what I mean. I think I I I feel like that's a problem. That's a, that's that's a relatable thing with both genders. Like if you, yeah, probably. I I think it is because like if you if you're a guy and you just know that you like can't like you can only come under like specific circumstances and you're with a girl mm -hmm. and she's really trying to get you to come because then that's it's stressful it's stressful for you because in your mind. You're like, yeah, oh shit! Like, now this, this person's gonna think like I don't like them. This person's gonna mm -hmm. like, that's true. You know, be like, uh, uh, I don't know, like, like, yeah, I like, think I don't like them, or like, be upset with me that I, you know, they because they they want to be the one to do it, you know. And I guess is that is that is that a similar pressure that you're thinking about? Definitely. Um, and I'm gonna be honest. I am. I've been like. Up until you've said it, because I don't think I've ever spoken to this about men. I've spoken to this about this with girls, but I've I've really mostly had prejudice that men always or barely ever have. Not barely ever. I do hear a lot about men who have trouble coming, but it's that it's much easier for them. But um, here's the thing. I, yeah. Well, I I don't know because I've never tried to i've never had a vagina never had and tried to make it come so i don't i only know one side of that okay okay so i don't I mean know my own i oh okay 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 yeah okay oh <laughs> okay no i understand what you mean okay i'm sorry i'm tired yes makes more um sense. Yeah, all these uh, everything you're talking about seems f like f fairly normal. I think I don't know. I'm not the fucking yeah. sex therapist. No, you're not a therapist at all. That is true. Um, but actually, I wanted to say one thing before I um, go, or if I get the chance to, I want because you spoke earlier in the stream about um, not being sure where this is going to go. But I wanted to actually take the time to thank you for like being here for people like a couple of times a week and like letting people call in and talk because a lot I think a lot of people me included even though I was nervous just want to talk or talk 
about myself or talk to someone about something. Thanks, so I man. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. And just to give context to the people listening on the podcast, I, I earlier in the stream, I was just like kind of reminiscing, uh, uh, just talking about like, you know, I want, I don't know um, how long like uh, th- my, my career doing this will last. I want it to last for, uh, I mean, I, I'll keep, I'll, this is a, it's a great job to be able to, to do this. So I want it to yeah. last for a while. So, um, you know, thank thanks thanks for listening and for um, sharing your story, so that those <laughs> who enjoyed it can uh, rate the podcast five stars and subscribe to get notified yeah. when there's new episodes. Woo! X thirty nine um, gang. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any anything. Did we solve any issues? What all did we even talk about? Uh. We did solve my fear of calling in, the calling into the show. Um. Oh, I have a question. I have. A, here's a question. Now that Thank we're on, you for now, this, the conversation this will, along. This will, I feel like this I will, don't have good enough things to say. This will. This this kind of ties in a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. Do you think okay. sexual attitudes? In general, in whatever, uh, interpret this question however you will. Do you think sexual mm-hmm. attitudes differ significantly or in any way at all between uh, Europe slash Sweden and the United States? Um, hmm. I, I've consumed, since I consume a lot of American media, I do hear more about what American people think about women and see and how they see sex and also I guess my experience with Swedish men compared to American men um, which uh, would be that as far as I understand I I still feel like American men don't put in as much effort to please a woman but that is I think that's Mm. really just based on how um, I how these all these Americans go in these podcast these red pill podcasts and talk about women and um i do see a difference in how women are objectified here in america especially in new york where as you probably experienced too as a man but you if you're a man or if you're an ugly woman you have to pay for a table at a club to get in while if you're pretty uh up to their standards if you're dressed, if you're wearing heels, you can get in for free and just like having to be able to having to walk around knowing that before I go out, having to stress and having to worry about how I look is something um, that is very different that I wouldn't experience at home. To the question, like, mm-hmm. do I mean, do you like when you like get dressed up and stuff and and like go out and you know whatever you're putting on makeup and and uh you know trying to trying to wear clothes that you like like or cl- clothes that you think would be attractive how much of mm-hmm. that is just you personally just enjoy dressing up and going out and just use of your own fulfillment versus like some desire for external validation or fear of rejection Ooh, I, f- I hope I don't speak for other women because I feel like this conversation easily goes to like, oh, women dress up for other people. Um, I do. No, it's, I'm just asking dress- you personally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. Uh, but I, um, I love dressing up and looking hot. Like I love dressing up, uh, looking nice. Um, I feel like I do it for the enjoyment of myself. I do love validation, but I don't feel like I get it. I don't feel like I get more validation when I'm out versus walking just like regularly. Uh, it's more that I guess that I'm seeking attention when I uh, go out to drink, for example, because that's like, that's the chance I get to maybe meet a guy. I'm not looking to meet someone when I'm, when I'm uh, out walking to Trader Joe, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the, the place or the, the, the place where I feel like I'm 
I need to put on a show. I, or And this is very specific, but it's like shoot or top is fine. When I'm in the States, I feel like I have to be someone else, like putting on, I have to put on different shoes. I'd rather just go out in sneakers. I have to put on like heels and maybe nicer dress pants. Mm. Um, and that's what I feel like I'm, I'm doing it for other people. And, and that's mostly if I want to get in anywhere, get in somewhere, there is a dress code. Um, uh, but usually I just dress for myself. I go to, um, a school where people like to dress up and I, I, I just put on whatever it would like to, I guess. Hmm. That's interesting. Cause, um, I've been, I've been running around talking to people, uh, in like Europe and some uh, a little bit of Japan and shit like that, and I've heard mm-hmm. a lot of people say that they feel in America more free to be themselves than in mm-hmm. their home country. But I guess everybody has a different point of view on that. Do do you? I don't know. Yeah. Do you not feel that way? Um, I feel like in America, I'm or in New York specifically. Um, there are some parts where I'm more and less comfortable. I am, for example, the other day I wanted, it's super hot and humid. So I wanted to walk out in a bandeau top and like a strapless top. And the first thing that happened was that I got catcalled and I was just like super uncomfortable and felt very sad about not being able to just walk out in a top that would ensure that I wouldn't be as hot as humanly like possible. Um, and that's something that I would never face in Sweden. I know that. Um, but I know also here that I can maybe experiment more with my clothing. Uh, so that feels nicer. But I do still, I guess, in this city that I am in, there's a lot of like pressure to look good, um, which I don't feel at home. I don't feel like anyone cares about what I look like at home. So, Joanna, what is your what is your dream in life? What does the future look like for you? My dream is to be happy forever, um, to have money to travel and um, to to not be too stressed in life and to not have bad metabolism like I do right now. <laughs> For dreams, um, can you make all of my wishes come true? I was gonna ask the chat. Uh, I've been do I've been enjoying doing this lately. I want to see if the chat has any questions for you, Joanna. Of course. Before mm-hmm, we go, mm-hmm. um, I'll ask you. I'll ask you this one while we get some questions going from the chat. Uh, what mm-hmm. I mean, what's what's making you happy right now, and what's stressing you out right now? Um, hmm. I'm happy to be back in the city i'm happy to um experience or hang out with friends i'm stressed and yeah i'm I'm stressed about being alone it's it's quite lonely in this big city um and i'm stressed about my uh what i'm gonna do when i'm finished with my studies because i don't want to leave new york i think i think i want to stay here do you have friends in the city at all? Like, are you making friends at least? Um, I am making friends, yes. But it's tougher than I thought it would be because I, I study with people who are four years younger than me, which is quite an age gap uh, mm. in maturity level. Um, so yeah, I've had a hard time. I've been usually been, I've always been good at making friends. So like having a hard time doing it has been extra tough. But I have... The thing that's helped is actually finding some Swedish people, uh, some Swedish friends here. Used XV in the chat says, do you have any regrets? About what? <laughs> About anything? Uh, oh, uh, going to America. Oh. Um, uh, hmm. I... I do have some regrets about not coming here earlier. I wanted to come here uh, from, uh, I wanted to come here four years ago, but I was dating this guy uh, and we decided to go and study uh, or to stay in Sweden and study instead because he Mm. didn't want to go here. 
I guess that's it. But I do think I needed the maturing that I had back home in Sweden too. I just wish I had more student funds to stay here. <laughs> um, K- Kinterview says, how would you prefer for men to approach you if they were going to approach you to get your attention in some way? Oh, oh, actually, hmm. I think I just prefer, hmm, I guess maybe, and this is a really weird thing to say, but it really depends on what the person looks like. If I will feel comfortable or uncomfortable. No, but you know I what? Like... You know what? You know what? People, people, um, people, uh, uh, I I know that upsets people. That whole idea mm-hmm. of like, um, you know, you can get away with more if you're attractive. I know that upsets people, but it's the way it's it's the way of life. And I think yeah. both, I I think both men and women have some of that. I don't even think that's a gender thing. No, know? and I, so I, I, I wouldn't has hold it against you. Too. So, I mean, everyone finds, like, Hassan Piker attractive, but I do also find, like, someone who might be conventionally attractive, attractive too. Uh, somebody asked, do you feel safer in America or in Sweden? Uh, I feel way safer in Sweden, uh, but I can carry uh, pepper spray here, which which kind of, like, makes me feel more safe here than I would without pepper spray. But I do feel more safe in Sweden. Oh, we have one last question. Meg Kell says, how do you deal with any unwanted attention from men? I think I usually... This doesn't happen that often either. I just want to preface that. I'm not an expert at this. Uh, But I, I, when it's happened, I think I've just, like, walked away. Usually that works. Um... Walked away or said no, thank you. Or the classic is, I have a boyfriend. Or have, have a you ever had to use? Have you boyfriend. ever had to use that pepper spray? No, I did accidentally spray it on my finger, and then I touched my eye with my other finger, but it and I still got pepper spray in my eye. That's I used it on myself. All right, this isn't a question, but the Mage System six 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 in the chat says. Not gonna lie, I'll let ugly slash old guys cat call me, and I just give them a mm. confident thank you, and it makes their day. Okay, good well, for them. Shout that's, out to them. Yeah. I usually wear my headphones on also to, like, avoid hearing if anyone says anything to me, which is a dumb thing. Everyone says to me to not wear my headphones around the city, but I, I walk around with my noise cans and my headphones, and nothing's happened to me yet. Um, well, anyway, um, Joanna, is there anything else you want to, uh, uh, say to me or to God or to the people of the computer, the people You listening? remembered my name. That's crazy. I did remember your name. Mm-hmm. Joanna. I want That's to crazy. Say... I usually don't remember names. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the chat a lot. They said your name. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to uh, apologize to say... for anything, uh, man. What's up? Tell me what you wanted to say. Go Tigers. What are the who are the That's Tigers? All. It's just the mascot for my school. I'm just saying go Tigers. Rock and roll. Um mm-hmm. Joanna, uh Gek bless you. Thanks for calling. And uh stay stay green. Okay, thank you. Do 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 Ah, she did an impression of, of the call in sound. That's cool. Um, shout out to 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 Joanna for talking about her life. Um, yeah, I only went to Sweden. I went to Sweden on this past tour this year, and I was only there for like a day, but uh, it was fine. You know what I've learned from traveling all over the place, and and I will say, I've only been. I haven't been to anywhere. That feels like super fringe to me, but like, you know, 
a lot of places. I mean, I've, uh, most of the, most a lot of the places I've been to are like you know uh, primarily English speaking, uh, whatever British colony type place things. But a lot of places are kind of the same. The gi- the gist of the gist of life exists everywhere. There are people. Those people walk around and talk to each other and eat food. That's the gist. That's everywhere. And uh, thank goodness for that universal life experience. I don't know if that was a stupid thing to say. All right. Thanks again, Joanna. Call from Beautiful Billy. Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, Billy. What's going on? How's life? Going pretty good. I just released an album today. And oh, you're you actually on an one album. of the tracks. I'm on one of the tracks? How much am I getting? You're on. How many cookies oh. are you sending? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, what, I what's think the... at least a fraction of two pennies. I'll take it. Uh, yes, what, what's right? the track? Play it for us. Um, I can't really play it right now. It would probably sound pretty bad over the phone. That's but okay. the track is called Already Perfect. Um, it, the album is called Lobster. The track is Already Perfect. I think it's like four tracks in. Okay. Am I, how, in what way am I on the track? Um, so it's like an A section going back into another A section. There's a small little break. And like you do like a small little interlude like saying that like everything's already perfect. It's really cool. Like a small like little... Um, can you Lyrical play it? Can you play it? Can you play it through the phone? Sure. Let me actually just pull that up. Do, 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 do. Someone in your chat already said it's really awesome. So let's mute this. Get this here. Oh wait, that actually sounds okay, like it sounds- would sound good if it wasn't through the phone. Yeah, it's all like live drum synthesizer. Yeah, right, keep going. Keep going. All right, you can stop playing it. That actually sounds even shittier. That that sounds pretty shitty. Not like the uh, the song sounds yeah. good. The song <laughs> sounds good, but the the yeah, yeah. the um I want to play it. Let me. It's really awesome. All right, you know what? Fuck it. Let me. Here's. I'll 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 let's I'll pull it up. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, I was creating it a few months back, and I was like making this song, and you were saying these exact like that transition that I put you in, it just lined up so perfectly. I had to go back to the VOD after the end of the stream, and then take it out and then put it into the track. It works so perfectly. I think I'm. It says it has literally no views. It just came out this morning. All right. Not lie in 
I need to change and shift external circumstances to make things even more perfect. My problem lies eternally in my own perspective of being able to constantly, consistently see those perfect things for what they are. I mean, just, I mean I'm not even talking about it. That's kind of cool. You kind of made me sound like Alan Watts. <laughs> Very uh, philosophical. Um, that was awesome, man. Claps. Yeah, claps, thank claps, you. claps, 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 claps. Um, uh, one of your uh, past guests like really inspired me and helped me like create those live drums and everything. It's all that was recorded in my bedroom with real drums, real synthesizers, the whole thing. Oh, yeah? Who was the guest? Uh, Kenny Beats. Ah, oh, KDB, it's rock and roll, rock and roll. Um, yeah. You, I just want to, you. I just got to say something to you. Um, saying this because I like you. You keep saying, um, you keep using a lot of musical terms while I'm on the phone with you, and um, I don't understand it, any of them. Like when you say live drums, <laughs> I'm like, I just, I know what a drum, I know what drums are, I know what a guitar is, and I know mm-hmm. that if you press buttons on a keyboard, it can make sounds, and you can use those sounds to make music. But I don't know what a loop is. I mean, I guess I know what a loop is. But anyway, who cares about me? Yeah, that was cool. It made, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was listening to it, and I'm like, oh, you know, if I actually, I, I think I rambled for a little bit too long in no, you're fine. what I was saying. But it, it was cool. I was like, you know what? I was listening to it, and I was like, you know what? Lyle's right, dude. He's right. He really, uh, <laughs> that really makes perfect sense what he just said. Um, mm-hmm. And it's yeah, funny because it, you could actually, you know, I'm, you know, I'm realizing you could actually, you could put music under any person talking, and it would make them sound a lot smarter. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. It's somehow. crazy like that, and then like, just like trying to like record stuff like yourself, like doing like vocals or anything like that. It's so hard to come by, but like you literally just hear someone talking in a video game chat, like saying like maybe like just some weird stuff off the wall like whoa that sounds so cool why didn't i think of that yeah if you put like a 13 year old kid talking about how he fucked your mom over that track over he would a sound, thick beat yeah oh, he dude. would sound millions like a genius sold. millions um that's cool who are you who are your artist who inspires you artistically besides just mr um, Kenny? Kenny Beats has been a big like inspiration, but just like getting my hands on like actual gear and just messing around with it. Like I've never really learned a song. I just never learned musical theory. I just make things that sound cool to my ear and that like like make my like, I don't know make my head feel good. Well, and I want to say this for somebody who's well. never studied musical theory. I'm very impressed that you know what live drums are. <laughs> They're really fun. It's really hard to like mess up playing drums because when you're playing actual like an actual drum set, you can feel like the wonkiness of it immediately. Like it's so responsive if you're doing something bad or good. Um, I'm like kind of like in the music industry a little bit. I do concert photography. Got like hundreds and hundreds of shows. Just, just like seeing these people up on stage like doing this like simple thing. Like, hey, I could do that. Bought a guitar and five years later now. Here's that. That's awesome, man. What's your dream? Is your are you hoping to go pro? It would be ideal. It would be really cool to be able to like make a living off of something creative, but that's that's not my main goal. My main goal is just to create for myself, and if I put it on the world and makes other people happy, that makes me happy. I don't want to make awesome, money man. off of it. I just want to create something. What what are you what are you doing now? Uh, like like a day job? Yeah. Uh, I work at a small internet service provider, like a small, like a really t- small town. I just make sure that, like old people's internet's up and running. I assist like people that are like ninety years old. Like, I can't talk to my grandson. Like, why can't I do this? And then I like patiently wait on the phone for them, like for thirty minutes, like walking through like how to open a web browser. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. Like, oh, you're so sweet. You remind me of my grandson. And then, like, the next day, they'll bring in cookies. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. It's that's a really, sweet. really small town. 
you pro- those people probably also come to you uh, with a lot of like spam emails that they've accidentally clicked on that infected oh, the yeah, computers with viruses. We've had some pretty interesting characters bring in like their uh, computers. We had this sweet little old lady that come in, like she had a virus on her machine. She's like, I don't know how I got it. Like, is anyone else using your machine or anything like that? I'm like, she's like, no, it's just me. I look into the computer history. She's going like every single day, 7.30 a.m., every single day, I swear. Hardcore tentacle porn. She is? Like her, her, yeah. Like not like some fucking kid is using her. Computer. No one else, no one else was on her machine. There's no remote software. Seven thirty, like a ritual. This old lady, super sweet, was looking at hardcore hentai tentacle porn. I, I want that to be a message <laughs> to everyone because you have in you because this is how this is life, bro. You have an idea of a type of person. In your head, and it's never the—it's never actually them. It's a stereotype, you know. Their browsing you have, history is you the have true person. In your head, the idea of who's watching tentacle hentai porn, and it's not who you would think. It's probably your grandma. Yeah, it's Dolores. Hmm. Hmm. That's inspiring. That's an inspiring story about an old lady watching <laughs> hentai porn. I'm very happy that you showed that to me. Um, mm-hmm. Dude, I like I like this music. This is cool. It's, it's stuff I, I would I would listen to. Uh, I used to yeah, be really into these. That. What is it? Trap, uh, f- uh, trapping in heaven. It's like lo-fi. You know what trapping trap, in heaven is? ID. No, I'm not familiar. Uh, trapping in heaven is uh, it's like some fucking YouTube thing I used to listen to. Do they just like play like a compilation, a bunch of like chill trap songs? Yeah, yeah, very similar to what what you just played. Um, nice, dude. Tell, tell before we go, what tell uh tell everyone where they can find you at again. So everyone can find me out uh like any major streaming platform, Spotify, Apple Music, all the big ones. Beautiful Billy just released an album today, Lobster. You can hear Lyle on it on Already Perfect. This was a good plug. I appreciate. I, I this was a smart <laughs> way to promote the music. That was it. Was good. It was, it I was honest, good. I mean, that stuff. I, I really, honestly I really to. just wanted to talk to you to make sure that you'd be cool with it. I figured that you'd be pretty chill, and you're not going to sue me and take it off of Spotify. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be. It'd be very funny <laughs> for your, though. If for I, your two cents. If you left <laughs> it would this be phone hilarious. call. <laughs> if you left this phone call thinking I was cool with it, and then I sent you a C and D. Oh shit! I should have called. Uh, this is not beautiful, Billy. I swear. Nah, you're fine. Um. Well, thanks for calling. Is Matt? Dude, is there anything else you want to say yeah. to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, keep on rocking in the free world. Doot little doot 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 doot. Um. Cool. Little little Nardwar in there. <laughs> uh, nailed it. <laughs> um, Billy, have a good night, man. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna check out the rest thanks, of this. Have a good night, Lyle. A lot. I appreciate it. Have a good night. That was really cool. It really, it really is true that the music makes you sound smarter than you actually are. Um, you can probably use that to your advantage somehow. I mean, actually, actually, I'm using that to my advantage right now. I, I put music under this podcast to make the things that people say sound more intelligent. And you didn't even notice. 